So you're thinking about moving to the Bozeman, Montana area. Maybe you're exploring all of the different little small towns all over the Gallatin Valley, including Manhattan, Montana, and you're curious what those need to know things are before buying property or moving to the area. So in this video, I'm gonna dive right into the pros and cons or the positives and negatives of living in Manhattan, Montana. My name is Hallie with Life in Bozeman, Montana. This channel is all about living in Bozeman, Montana and around it in all of the small towns and other areas here from Livingston to Three Forks to Ennis to Big Sky. And of course that includes Manhattan. Manhattan is a small town right here in Southwest Montana, right in the heart of Gallatin County to be more precise. And there are definitely some important things to know before moving here or buying property. If you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check out a couple of my previous videos on Manhattan as well where I dove into the map and did kind of a tour around the area so you could get yourself um, kind of acquainted with that as well as doing a full vlog tour of the community. So let's get right into it and discuss those pros and cons of living in Manhattan. Now it probably goes without saying but if you're looking for Manhattan New York this is definitely not it. Manhattan Montana probably could not be more different. One thing I definitely get asked about a lot here is the weather or uh, specifically the winters. So I'll definitely be touching on that more in depth here a little bit later in the video. But first, I really wanted to touch on the community that is Manhattan. The residents of Manhattan, about 2,000 of them, greatly value community. People tend to fill the stands at the local school sporting events. Um, you know, you'll get a friendly nod or a wave or a hello when you pass by each other um, in the small downtown area. And when you're driving country roads, you'll definitely see the customary wave as you go by. People tend to know each other by name and are very friendly overall. Manhattan was created and is still largely centered around the farming and ranching type community. You'll see farms and ranches surround the whole area. In fact, there's a wonderful community event that even takes place every August called the Manhattan Potato Festival. It's a down home summer festival that really just celebrates that Montana way of life and the culture around that farm and ranch community. Like I said, it's a small tight knit community, which is a wonderful thing for those who like to know their neighbors and other folks in town. It is absolutely its own little small town separate from the others here in the area and the folks who live in Manhattan tend to love it that way. Most residents rely on their own private vehicles as there's not a lot, um, if any, public transportation, but you would be hard pressed to not find a neighbor who's willing to help out if you were in a pinch. If you can picture it with me, uh, living in a small town with a smaller population, which also means less light pollution from the city itself, um, doing a little bit of stargazing or, you know, watching a meteor shower right in your own backyard. It's absolutely spectacular. The night skies that you can see when you get away from those city lights. It truly is a very peaceful, quiet town. The schools are all very highly rated as well, according to websites like niche.com and greatschools.org. Um, there is an elementary school, a middle school, as well as a high school. And then of course, there is the community staple, which is the more than 100 year old private school right in the middle of town as well. Also nearby, right in the middle of town is a very large public park called Taylor Park with uh, baseball fields and playgrounds and picnic tables. And you'll often find members of the community hanging out and just enjoying that open green space. Now, much like the rest of uh, this part of Montana or really most of Montana actually, uh, there is plenty of outdoor adventure to be had in and around Manhattan. If you're into mountain biking, hiking, or camping, there are mountains and trails all around this beautiful valley. If you're into fly fishing, there is a blue ribbon trout habitat right on the Gallatin River, maybe five minutes from downtown Manhattan. If you're into skiing, snowboarding, or snowmobiling, uh, we've got Bridger Bowl just on the other side of Bozeman, Big Sky Resort down to the south of the valley, and backcountry opportunities all over the mountains in winter as well. Now, if you're into hunting, there are public lands all over the area as well. In fact, Montana has 6.7 million acres of public lands in the state. So the opportunities for that are far and wide in the state as well as close by uh, in and around the Manhattan area. If you just love a good mountain view, well, you really can't go wrong with that 
either depending on which direction you're looking at we are surrounded by mountain ranges and of course the rivers lakes and everything in between make this area an absolute outdoor enthusiast's dream come true all of that said if you're looking for things to do that aren't outdoor focused you might find that the area of manhattan uh, especially is a bit lacking there's really not much shopping in manhattan and there's really not a lot to do indoors activity wise for kids adults or families just not a lot of places to hang out now of course there's going to be a few different bars or saloons in the town um, but as far as family friendly indoor activities there really isn't much now of course bozeman isn't too far away where you're gonna find a whole lot more of that sort of thing between the museums um, and the university and sporting events things like that but Manhattan itself is definitely lacking which of course brings me to location so Manhattan is in a beautiful spot right here in the Gallatin Valley bordered somewhat by the Gallatin River on the north and east sides of town and with the foothills to the north and the mountains all around this whole area the views really are stunning Manhattan is about 20 minutes or so to Bozeman right on the interstate there, which is where you'll find Montana State University amongst a whole plethora of shopping and dining and other opportunities as well. And then of course, about 10 miles down the interstate uh, between Bozeman and Manhattan is where you're gonna find Belgrade, Montana, which is where the international airport is located. So everything is fairly accessible right down the interstate there. And some people definitely do choose to live in Manhattan and work in Bozeman. Being that Bozeman is the larger city in the area with just over 50,000 residents. And with Manhattan being as small as it is comparatively, as you can imagine, there are gonna be more job opportunities in the Bozeman area uh, than Manhattan. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't find a job in Manhattan. There are certainly some opportunities. But there's gonna be quite a few more, um, you know, better paying jobs potentially as well in the Bozeman area. Now, before we dive into all that winter weather and discussing the seasons, as I said, my name is Hallie. I am a born and raised Bozemanite, helping people to relocate, move, and simply find their place here in Southwest Montana. Bozeman, Big Sky, Livingston, Three Forks, and everywhere in between and all around. My phone and email are right here, or you can visit the link in the description to learn a little bit more or to reach out so we can set up a one-on-one -on -one call. I'm here to help you find the right place for you so that you can fall in love with this place the same way that I do. I wouldn't want you to end up in the wrong spot, so be sure to jot down that information and feel free to reach out. Weather and winter in particular is definitely one of the things that I get asked about the most. Depending on the person I'm speaking with and their preferences, that can either be a pro or a con. It's no secret really that Montana tends to have intense, harsh, cold winters. With the cold, the snow, the wind, um, and the long, dark nights, it can be a lot for some people. Winter is our longest season by far, starting, um, you know, sticking around really by early to mid-November and then lasting clear through sometimes into mid to late April. Now the snow has actually come down at least once in every month out of the calendar year here in Montana. Montana, but pretty typically you're not going to see snow outside of the months of, you know, between October and April. But I do know that growing up, there was more than one year where my Halloween costume had to fit over a snowsuit. The mountains will certainly see more snow in those higher elevations than we'll see down in the valley. But you can definitely expect snow to be a regular occurrence and for it to be on the ground for the extended winter season. Now, of course, that does also mean that the roads are gonna be affected by those freezing temperatures and snowfall as well. In Manhattan, in January, which is typically the coldest month around here, the average high is 32 degrees and the average low temperature is 10 degrees. We've also been known at times, uh, you know, know each year maybe once during the month of January and February to experience a little bit more of an extreme cold snap where things will definitely go below zero uh, for a few days at a time it usually only happens once or twice uh, during each winter but it can feel pretty extreme so having a car that is well equipped for those cold wintry roads is definitely going to be a must here in Montana plan ahead get some good winter tires on your vehicle and if you can something with all-wheel drive and you should be just fine all that winter weather all of the roads everything can be a lot for some folks but for those of us who ski or snowboard it's a winter wonderland so do your best to get out there and enjoy it and embrace it and it won't feel quite so long 
Now all this talk about snow, of course, and I'm about to tell you that the climate here actually tends to be on the drier side. We don't tend to see high humidity, you know, even anything above 50% and everybody around here is like, why is it so humid? And even the snow itself typically has a lower moisture content, which of course translates to incredible powder days out on the slopes. But in late summer, that dryness can become somewhat of a concern as we run into fire season. Sometimes it's smoke from other areas that gets blown in from neighboring states or even north um, from Canada. Other times it's localized fires or fires around the valley in the mountains um, or in other parts of the state. But either way, that dry heat can be really difficult. We might run into fire restrictions where if you go camping, you're not allowed to have a campfire. And sometimes the air quality can suffer from that smoke as well. Summertime isn't always affected. It doesn't happen every single year, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if that's a concern. Um, we don't love it when the air quality goes down. We don't love it when our views are obstructed, but it is just a normal thing around here during those late summer months in particular. Now, taking a look at the cost of living overall, it is definitely lower in Manhattan than it is in the Bozeman area. Uh, overall, Bozeman is about 20 to 22% higher than the national average. Manhattan is definitely a bit lower than that. But when we look at pricing for homes in particular, the median list price on a residential property currently in the greater Bozeman area is 926,000. Now comparatively in the Manhattan area or the greater Manhattan area, the median list price for a residential property right now is 930,000. However, in Manhattan, far more often that price tag is gonna come with some kind of land or acreage. Of the 27 residential listings currently in the Manhattan area, only 11 of them have less than an acre that they are sitting on. That means that about 60% of the listings in the Manhattan area have an acre or more. In contrast, in the Bozeman area or the greater Bozeman area of the 361 currently active residential listings, 271 of them have less than an acre. So that means only 25% of the currently listed properties in the Bozeman area have an acre or more. So generally by going outside of Bozeman going down the interstate just a little ways there, you're going to see prices go down or you're going to see that your money goes a little further. You're going to get more for your money in the Manhattan area or Three Forks or Belgrade, which are both on that uh, west side of Bozeman as well. So that pretty much sums up the pros and cons and the things that you need to know before moving or buying property in Manhattan, Montana. Of course, I've got the other videos that I mentioned around the Manhattan area, but I also have videos all over Southwest Montana from Big Sky to Livingston and Three Forks and Bozeman and Belgrade as well. So if you're looking around or you're curious where the right place is for you, hopefully one of those videos can help and of course feel free to get in touch. Whether you're looking to make a move in a couple weeks, couple of months, or even a year, I'd be honored to help you find your place here in Manhattan or any of those surrounding areas. There's going to be another video popping up here in just a moment, so be sure to click and watch that to learn even more. And until next time, I hope to show you around.